Hey everyone, it's Ilinka and today we're gonna discuss how to not get replaced by AI. And this is the ultimate guide on how to literally not get replaced by AI in an era full of AI. I'm a software engineer, I know what I'm speaking of. If you like any of my thoughts, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. It's so difficult nowadays to actually keep a job. I mean, we're literally in an era of AI. Everything is AI powered, everything is using AI, everyone is building AI apps, webs, everything. And then here you are. You are wondering whether you're gonna get laid off and what you can do against being replaced. Let's talk a bit about where your fear is coming from. Maybe you're a junior, you don't have that much work experience yet, so you don't know where to look, what to do in order to not get replaced. Companies are hiring seniors, companies are hiring people who have actual experience with building AI tools and deploying AI tools, yet here you are starting your career and you're wondering what to do, where to look. Maybe you're a senior developer, you don't have much idea about AI and you're wondering whether you should jump on the AI train or not. And the simple answer is this isn't another technology which comes and goes. AI is here to stay. We are trying to simulate the human brain. And it's not like at any point we're gonna stop trying because where we're going is trying to create general AI, which is basically an intelligence which can think like you, just like you. Um, it's not an AI which would be trained for a specific task, but it's an AI which like your brain can simply think, come up with ideas and come with solutions to multiple subjects and questions. So what you should do as a developer, first of all, use AI to your advantage. As I said, AI will go nowhere. It will be only more prominent. So use AI to your advantage while you still got time to adapt. That doesn't mean that all your tasks have to be done by AI, but you should use AI in order to save your time and be more efficient. The security aspect of this is simply huge. It's not like you can copy paste code into and from AI without without risking anything. Of course, everything comes with risks and you should be the brain behind it. You should know what you're putting into the AI and you should know what you're getting out of it. So not simply copy pasting code, but literally going through the code, trying to think, trying to think it through, ask questions, etc. Simply use it to your advantage so that you are becoming a better coder. Not that you're stopping to think because many junior developers simply stop to think. And that's the easiest way to get replaced because when your brain is not working and you're just using AI, that's something that can be automated. There you go. You are the one who's going to lose the job because you stopped thinking, you stopped using their, your brain and you stopped developing your skills. So use AI to your advantage, but think what you're doing with it. And of course, don't just put in sensitive data into the language models. In the end, we don't know what's happening with what you're putting into it. So beware of that. Try to develop AI skills. You can see a lot of job listings for AI nowadays. So try to get AI skills. So if you're, for example, a software engineer, try to have a look at how machine learning engineers work. Maybe you already know a bit of Python. Maybe you can use Python and learn the data science and the machine learning part of it. So you can experiment a bit more with data science, but also with machine learning models. Maybe try some neural networks, maybe try some deep learning. It's so easy and so accessible nowadays. There's so many great tutorials on how to get started. You can even use AI to help you get started. So there is no reason why to not have a look at AI if you simply want to broaden your experience and your knowledge. Then if you're someone who's integrating a lot, then have a look at AI ML integrations because companies are literally looking for people able to integrate the models. Not just looking for people who can build the actual models, but those who can integrate the existing models which are used by many companies who are in the AI sphere. Many of them are not developing their own AI models, but are simply using what is already out there, what someone has already done. So you're the 
someone who's integrating that. So just learn the whole pipeline, the whole workflow, learn how to work with large language model APIs, learn how to work with big data, with storages, databases, etc. Everything surrounding that because once you're working with big data, you need to store the big data somewhere. You need applications to be quick and efficient. So if these are skills you can develop and you don't already have, that's always a plus. Don't just be a simple developer, you know? Try to go more into architecture, more into deployment or literal AI itself. So when those people who aren't using AI to their advantage get replaced, then who gets replaced? People who don't know how to use AI properly. So those who don't have good prompt engineering skills. So the better you can understand the models, the better you can become at prompt engineering ultimately the better of a developer you are because you're not wasting time with getting bad responses to your bad prompts. So learning how the AI works, how to get what you want out of the AI is a way to also become better at your work. If you're someone who's good at problem solving, you are the winner because AI can solve problems which you give to them, but they're not as good at identifying the problems. So a lot of time when you ask them to find bugs in your code, they find nothing. But if you point out the problem, they can help you fix it. So if you're good at identifying problems, if you know where and what needs to be fixed, you're still valuable. Another thing, don't just be focused on general things. Try to build a knowledge in a specific subject. So for example, cybersecurity, healthcare, maybe finance. Try to simply combine your technical skills with a certain area of your expertise and that's a powerful combo still. Which brings me to human-centered skills. We're trying to make everything easy for humans, right? Web pages, for example, we want you users to know where each item is so that they don't get headache from navigating on your web page. And these are skills which the AI still doesn't have. And especially design skills. When you're designing a web page, it's really, really difficult to tell the AI what exactly you want. And it's really, really difficult to get the result you're looking for. You're still the one who's designing intuitive interfaces, who gives the user a pleasant experience because the user is still a human for now. Architecture, designing scalable systems, this is something the AI still is lacking in. And you as the human have great judgment about architecture. Soft skills. I know, I know a lot of coders, they don't really develop their soft skills. It's not their strongest part. Trust me, I'm an introvert. I hate soft skills. But at one point, especially when I was doing my PhD, I found out that soft skills are really important. Because if you don't have soft skills, nobody's gonna understand what you're researching, what you're doing, if you can't explain it. So try to invest into getting soft skills, communication skills, because still you will be talking with people you have no technical knowledge. Maybe someone just hires you to integrate some AI models and then you're like, okay, but I need to talk to this person. So learn how to talk to them because that is still valuable and that gives you the job because AI is doing the coding part and you're the man in the middle. The AI is doing your job and you're talking to the stakeholder. Creativity, AI is not really creative. It really isn't. Remember, you have a working brain. You can think, okay, you're no algorithm, you're no model which was trained on data. You are your own creative mind. You get inspiration out of the world and you can get creative with your ideas. And trust me, you're gonna come with so many more creative ideas than some AI, for now at least. So use that to your advantage. If you like data, maybe it could be interesting for you to look into AI ethics, government, and into AI models being biased. Because how well do the models perform? Well, it depends what data you fit into them. So if the data is biased, your model is gonna be biased and it's gonna have biased opinions which is not really ethical. So this is maybe a sphere where you can find a job. If you still want to stay in the development part, maybe have a look at cybersecurity. Because as we're copy pasting code into and from the AI models, we introduce a lot, a lot of security issues. And someone has to fix them. And not only fix them, cybersecurity companies will want developers who can actually understand what they're copy pasting. 
So actually having a deep understanding about what you're doing and which security breaches you might be introducing. Don't only develop soft skills in terms of being able to talk to non-technical people, but also try to be collaborative. Like try to actually be someone who is good in a team who works efficiently in a team, who can actually bring something to the team. If you're good in a team, maybe you're gonna get promoted and you're gonna be a leader. And when you become a team leader, you can guide other people and you ultimately become more valuable because there's AI, then there are developers who are doing things with the AI, and then there is you and you are mentoring them. You are leading them, you are their lead. This is not a role that's gonna get replaced by AI anytime soon. As a software engineer, you constantly have to reinvent yourself. You constantly have to adapt to new frameworks, languages, technologies, and this is just another of them. So you literally have to reinvent yourself, unfortunately, and try to get into the AI sphere at least a bit. Whatever you make towards learning more about AI is still an advantage you're gonna have. And last but not least, please don't fight it. This is not a war you can win. You can only lose. You can be the predator or the prey. And I'm sure you don't want to be the prey. So even if you're someone who is not interested in AI whatsoever, just try to use AI to your advantage and you're already gonna be higher than the people who are simply fighting AI and saying that they're not gonna use AI. Just be the bigger person, be the bigger brain because you still got a brain, so simply use it. Who's gonna not get replaced? People who are connecting things together. People who are connecting legacy systems with newer AI systems. People who are integrating things, who know a bunch about architecture, deployment, security, workflows and pipelines. Don't be just that monkey who's typing code. I hope this video was helpful. I hope I could motivate you at least a bit. If I did, please like this video, give me a subscribe and share it with your friends who don't want to be replaced by AI. I really hope my thoughts were straight to the point. I appreciate your view. Remember to write all your thoughts into the comment section because anyone viewing this video can read your comments and get additional info on this topic. Maybe I am wrong about something, maybe you want to point something out just do it in the comment section and i hope to see you guys in the next one bye